We are back now at 810 with the horrific wrong way drunken driving crash here in New York State that killed eight people, including three young sisters. Well, now the mother of those girls has made her first public comment since the tragedy in 2009. NBC's Ann Thompson is in Briarcliff Manor with details on this. Ann, good morning. Good morning, Matt. Jackie Hans's story begins here at this exit ramp where her sister-in-law made a wrong turn leading to that collision that killed Jackie's three daughters. For the first time, Jackie is writing about that accident, her paralyzing loss, and the hope she now carries. Jackie Hans asks, how does a person go from being like a sister to me, adored by my girls and cherished by my husband, to being the one who ruined our lives? In a raw, unflinching account in Ladies Home Journal, Jackie describes how her life began to unravel with a phone call from her eight-year-old daughter, Emma, who said something's wrong with Aunt Diane. Jackie says she was later stunned to learn the most responsible person I knew, her sister-in-law, was driving high and drunk. Diane Schuler had a blood alcohol content of 0.19 percent. The legal limit for intoxication in New York State is 0.08 percent. Schuler drove the red minivan the wrong way on the Taconic State Parkway for almost two miles until she hit an SUV, killing three people in that vehicle and five in her van herself, her daughter, and Jackie's three girls. Emma, the big sister, seven-year-old Allison with the infectious smile, and five-year-old Katie, the baby. I was so dazed with grief, Jackie writes, I'd wander out of my room or out of the house at all hours. I didn't know what I was doing, searching for the girls. My friends and family would gently steer me back where I belonged. People wept outside this Long Island church as Jackie's husband, Warren, eulogized his daughters. Cherish your children. Kiss your children. And don't ever forget. Jackie cannot. Her girls' bedrooms are untouched. Their birthdays still celebrated. But she says her extended family is split by Diane's husband's vehement defense of his wife. She is not an alcoholic, and my heart is resting every night when I go to bed. Something medically had to happen. Jackie is upset her brother-in-law gave HBO permission for an upcoming documentary about the crash called There's Something Wrong with Aunt Diane. The fact they use my daughter Emma's last words as a title only makes it that much more painful. The lone survivor of the accident is Diane's son, Brian, Jackie's godson, but she stays away from him. I have to be able to trust myself around him, and right now I don't. I want to reach out and hug him and at the same time try to shake answers out of him. Jackie is trying to adjust to her new reality, but even going out can be a challenge. I think people are whispering, wondering how I can be having fun, as if I've forgotten the girls. They can't imagine how I feel a couple of hours later when we get back home and there's no babysitter to pay. Though Jackie wishes every day to be in heaven with her daughters, in her mind, they have other plans for her. This fall, Jackie and her husband, Warren, are expecting a baby. Now, now Jackie says she has been amazed by the outpouring from total strangers. They've received thousands of cards and letters and offers of help, most notably from a Manhattan fertility doctor who may have given them perhaps the best medicine of all. Matt? Uh, Dan Thompson for us on this story, and thank you very much. Janice Kaplan is a writer for Ladies Home Journal who worked with Jackie Hance on this piece. Janice, good morning to you. Good nice morning, to see you. I was haunted by the accident two years ago. I was haunted again reading this piece. Yeah. And yet I think everyone should read it, especially parents, because it makes you stop and think about some very important issues. Right. You know, the raw pain that Jackie feels comes across in this article. And what struck me about Jackie is when a tragedy like this happens, we all try to think why it couldn't be us, why it couldn't be anybody we know. And the first time I met Jackie, she walked in and I thought, you're every woman, do, you're, do, you're do you anybody. Have, do you have a sense for why she wanted to write this with you now? Is this a part in some ways of her healing process? I think so. And I think when something this horrible happens, you look for that one strand of good. And for Jackie, that one strand of good maybe helping other people who are in a tough situation go on this part of the article where she talks and writes about um, walking around in this 
days of grief mm -hmm. where she would leave the home the house at all times of the of the day and perhaps even looking for her children searching right. for her children is she, is she leading a more normal life now I think so her mind just couldn't accept this tragedy she just was reliving that same day over and over she'd every time she woke up she thought that it was that Sunday morning again in the article Jackie says people always ask her how she feels about her sister-in-law Diane Schuler who was behind the wheel of the mm -hmm. minivan she says you can't imagine how complex that question is. We're talking about a woman who she thought was the most responsible right, person in her right. life who ended up taking the lives of her three daughters. Exactly. Unbelievably complicated and painful to somebody who you love, who your family has loved, who the, your families have always spent time together. You trust your three most precious children with them, and, uh, and then something like that happens. You can't explain it. And it's a tragedy upon a tragedy because not only was there this massive loss of life, there was the fracturing of this family even among the survivors. Right. The people left behind no longer communicate with one another. Well, Jackie and her husband have managed to, to stay together, as is difficult in a situation like this, but they've been strong together. But of course, this was his sister. And uh, Jackie talks about looking at the pain in his eyes and uh, knowing the, the many sources of that. Expecting a child in the fall. I mean, that one of the messages from the article is the importance of moving forward. Right. No and matter how severe the tragedy. Exactly. And the, and the great courage of, of doing that and the great sense of hope and inspiration that 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 is that uh, whatever has happened and knowing how that perhaps we can't always protect our children, you still you still have to go forward. They're keeping their daughter's memory alive in the Hans Family Foundation. Just That's tell correct. me a little bit about that. It's a foundation in memory of the girls and uh, that um, uh, does lovely things for other young women in the community, helping them build self-esteem, body image, lovely programs for them in their memory. Janice Kaplan. Janice, thanks very much. Thanks, I appreciate Matt. it. We're back right after this.